Hey there, this is Sean from Cornerstone, and in this video we will be taking a look at Citrix. In this video we are going to go over what Citrix is and how to get it set up. So if you are watching this video, you should have already completed both the Intro to Technology video and the Phone Factor video, so you should have your four-digit PIN to get into Citrix. Alright, so what is Citrix? Citrix is pretty much everything. Citrix is the thing that you actually sign into every single day. So when you go to sign in for work, you're signing into Citrix. When you do get signed into Citrix, you're going to be presented with an option, and that option is to select a Citrix desktop. Once you click on that desktop, it's going to open up what's, what already kind of looks like what you're seeing here, but it is actually something that is streaming off of a server, a server that is housed here at Cornerstone. All right, so the setup. The first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is go to Internet Explorer. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up real quick. The next thing that we are going to do is go to a web page. That web page is https colon slash slash tpf dot cornerstone brands dot com. Go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to take you to this Citrix Access Gateway. You can see right here uh, that this is the Citrix Access Gateway. This is a website that you are going to be coming to every single day when you sign in to work. So, I mean, if it's going to be something that you see every single day that you're going to have to come to every single day, the logical thing would be to make it a favorite or a bookmark. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. In Internet Explorer 8, there's this little star that I can go ahead and hit. Since we're already on the web page, I can go ahead and hit that, and it'll make a quick link to the Citrix Access Gateway. Another way you can do it is you can actually click on uh, the Favorites button here and add it to Favorites here so that it will be in your list here also. If you have IE9 or IE10, sometimes there is a gear that's over here in this corner, or there's a little star that's up in the address bar that you can go ahead and click as well. Whatever, whatever way you use to make something a bookmark or a favorite, please go ahead and do that now. It will only make your life easier. The next thing that we want to go ahead and do, since we're already on this web page, is go to the internet options. Now, the internet options can be accessed for a, from a couple of different places. One of those places is by going to tools over here and internet options, or on Internet Explorer 9 and 10, and even 8, uh, most of the time the, the file edit favorites buttons are hidden. If you hit the alt button on your keyboard, so the button that's to the left and right of your spacebar on your keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick, it actually brings up the submenus that were hidden. And from there, you're going to go to Tools, and then Internet Options. So that's just a couple different ways to get into the Internet Options. The next thing that you're going to do is go ahead and make sure that it is a safe site, that it's a, a site that your computer is well aware of, then there's no angriness between the, the website and your, your browser. So the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're right now we're on the General tab. We're going to go to the Security tab where it says trusted sites, go ahead and make sure that is selected. We're going to go ahead and hit sites. And then as you can see, it's already in there. I'm going to remove it and add it once more for you. So it is HTTPS colon slash slash TPF dot cornerstone brands dot com. Go ahead and hit add. It's in there. Hit close. Click OK and now everything is kosher. As you can see down here in the left hand, that's the right hand, Sean. <laughs> if you can see down here in the right hand corner, bottom right hand corner, it'll say that it is a trusted site. So the next thing we're gonna do is sign in. So we have a username field and a password field. Now the username is going to be the username that you use to sign into Phone Factor with. We also call these credentials your network credentials. So we're using the John Doe test account or example account. So I'm going to use his jdoe username. And then the password is going to be the same thing that you used the original time with Phone Factor. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. And what's going to happen here is when I hit log on, it is going to call my cell phone. Why is it going to call my cell phone? Well, it's calling my cell phone because during our phone factor setup, we actually established my cell phone as the primary number for phone factor to call. 
So what is Phone Factor doing here? I'm signing in as J Doe using his username and password. You know, so J Doe is saying, hey, Citrix, let me in. Let me in. I would like to work. Citrix says, well, let me check and make sure that you actually are J Doe. I'm going to give your primary number a call via Phone Factor and just to make sure and authenticate that you actually are who you're saying you are. So I'm going to go ahead and log on. And we're going to wait here just for a second for this to call my phone. And there's the phone call. I'm going to go ahead and answer. Phone factor. Please enter your PIN followed by the pound sign to complete your authentication. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put in my PIN. You have successfully authenticated using phone factor. All right, so I put in my four-digit pin, hit the pound button, and then hung up my cell phone. And as you can see, as soon as I put in that four-digit pin and the pound sign, it automatically took me from the login screen to the end user agreement. So when you sign in every single day from home, that is what's going to happen. You're going to go to tpf.cornerstonebrands.com via this favorite link that we created. And once you're there, you're going to sign in using your username and password. Once you sign in using your username and password, it's going to call your cell phone because that's what we set up with Phone Factor. Phone Factor is going to ask you for your PIN. Once you put in that PIN, it's going to let you through the door. It's going to let you across the bridge or in, up into the apartment building. And so here we are. We're in Citrix now. Go ahead and hit I agree. And the next step here in the setup is going to be actually installing this Citrix receiver. So we're going to go ahead and hit I agree for the Citrix license agreement. And we're going to hit this giant green button in the middle of the screen that says install. When it prompts you if it wants to run or save, you can do either, but I'm going to recommend hitting run. Because when you hit run, what it does is it downloads the file and then automatically opens it up. If you hit save, it'll save it off to a location. You have to know where that location is, and then you have to go and open it up there. So run just eliminates a whole step out of the, the, the entire process there. So this should not take too long. It should only take a couple minutes. And during this time, I do want to take a, a quick second and remind you that if I am ever going too fast, if there's something that you feel like you've missed somewhere along the way, do not hesitate to pause kind of get caught up with whatever you're doing on your side of things or even go back and rewatch the videos. I want to stress that this is not going to be an overwhelming process. We want this to be nice and simple for you. And if that's going to be the case, don't try to get it all right on the first on the first try. Watch these videos multiple times. Make sure that you you understand each element of this setup uh, series so that when you do come to training class, you are ready to go and you know the differences between all the different apps and Everything is already set up and ready to go. So as we wait here, uh, we are going to watch the magical green bar. <laughs> and the Citrix receiver really isn't something that is intrusive. It's not, it's not an application that's going to pop up every time you turn on your computer. It's nothing that is going to do anything funky. It literally just lives in the background. It's not, it's not a like an instant messaging tool that pops up all the time. So don't worry about that. This is a one-time install. Once you've installed it, it just lives in the background. And it doesn't take up resources. It's not always running. It's, it's a very, very safe application. Like I said in, this, in the intro to tech video, over 230,000 organizations use Citrix. So millions of people are using this. It's, it's not in any way malicious. So we have finished downloading it. Now it wants to ask us if we are going to run it or don't run it. We're going to go ahead and hit run. And it's going to prompt us to install it. So go ahead and hit install. And this is another brief waiting moment where it's going to come up here in a second. And it's going to have, we're going to have another green bar that we're going to have to wait for uh, for the install process. There it goes. All right, and we have installed Citrix. Now, I do want to point out a couple of things to you. So, obviously, you can see that as soon as Citrix was finished installing, it took us to this page. But if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see this little black box. This little black box is the icon for the Citrix receiver. If that is down there, you will know that your Citrix, your Citrix receiver has been installed properly. And that's pretty much where it's going to live. Anytime you sign into uh, Citrix, just like we did, it's going to run this Citrix receiver. 
So let's recap real quick. We signed in a Citrix, Phone Factor called us, we put in our pin, we downloaded the Citrix receiver, and now we are at this page. This is a page that you are going to see every single day when you sign into Citrix. Right here it says CSS1, CSS2 Desktop. CSS1 stands for Customer Service and Sales 1, which is going to be a order entry position. The CSS2 position is a customer service. They deal with returns and such, uh, those types of functions as well in the call center. So we're at this page, you can see we're logged, in, logged on as J Doe, and we're gonna go ahead and click this play button. So kind of going back to that Netflix reference, we signed into Citrix, which is kind of like signing into Netflix. We found the one that we wanna play, and you just go ahead and click it, and it will start streaming from our servers here at Cornerstone to your desktop. Now, I do want to stress that you only want to click this a single time. You do not want to double click it. When you double click it, some funky things can happen and we do not want that. So one single click, it'll turn blue and we will launch the Citrix desktop here in just a second. So there you can see that it is starting. And it's still starting. and we're gonna keep on starting, and bam, there we are. We are in the Citrix desktop. So you can kind of see what I was saying was when I was saying, oh, when you sign into Citrix, you're gonna open up a Citrix desktop, and that Citrix desktop is going to look pretty much like your normal desktop. I mean, we still have the start button. We still have a desktop here. We have a bunch of different applications. But in short, that is the Citrix setup. So we are in, ta-da! Give yourself a pat on the back. If you've made it this far, you are trucking right along. So I, d I do want to say one more time that, you know, thank you for watching. Thank you for trekking with me. I do want to stress one more time that if you missed any step along the way, please go back, rewatch, watch again, pause, make sure that you're on the same page. Watch it as many times as you need. This is designed to not be stressful. All right. Well, thank you for watching. This is Sean once again with Cornerstone, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.